Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone, regular rollers time, boom shakalaka. We're going to get started right after I mentioned that this week's list is brought to you by Greg Morris Cards. More on them coming up in just a bit. We'll start off with one sent in by Jeff, uh, who we've actually done a deal with in the past, and hopefully do another one in the near future. Wrote, uh, I know you point out red flags for people. Check out the screw down of this PSA slab on this Walter Johnson card. Yeah, this here is not even a good try. I mean, the, the, uh, they call it a PSA poor fair one, but you can see that there's not in a PSA holder. It's just in a screw down, and then they've included a printout of a PSA label in the screw down, and that's obviously a fake PSA label if you look at the back. It's just a, a blue. That, that's not what the PSA label looks like. So this is just a fake all around. Uh, all sorts of shenanigans going on here. I, like looking over the card, I, I can't really tell for sure whether it's fake or not. I mean, I don't see anything that jumps out and screams fake, but I would assume it's fake given the uh, the rest of the situation here. And it was, it was at $935 in auction with three days left. So uh, hopefully that'll go to the eBay Authenticity Guarantee Program, get rejected, and the buyer will uh, get refunded. Next one is sent by Walker, who wrote, uh, I have the perfect card for your regular rollers, 1983 Dan Marino rookie card for a dollar. I guess since it's a dual, people, are, it's not desirable, but I absolutely love it. Plus, you get Steve Barkowski card. What a deal. Yeah, this is a great alternative rookie. And if you if you like this sort of thing, check out my video coming out on Saturday. It's all about these uh, these sort of cards. 1984 Tops is a Dan Marino rookie. That can get, you know, fairly expensive. But he's also in this set a couple other times. He's got a an action card, and he also has this league leader card that he was uh, well, a league leader in his rookie year. And so this is a rookie year card. Uh, and yeah, a dollar for Dan Marino rookie. Nothing wrong with, uh, certainly nothing wrong with that. Next one is sent by Carl Daly, who wrote, uh, one of my hobbies in the hobby is noticing when manufacturers reuse the same picture. A prime example is the 1990 OPG Premier Yammer Yager. It's the same image used in the 1991 OPG and Top Set. A more recent example I just noticed while browsing eBay is that Shoei Otani's classic 2017 Bowman Mega box image is the same as the 2018 Topps Chrome 1983 version, just with airbrushed, uh, airbrushed with the Angels logo and uniform. The giveaway is the sign in the background. This one was sent by Mike, and it's a very simple but uh, really nice write-up about the card. He wrote, I consider myself a collector 100%. I buy the most random cards just because I only like how they look or I'm a fan of the player. I've enjoyed watching Justin Herbert, so I purchased one of only a handful of graded cards that I own. Offered $30 and was fortunate enough to get it for $38 all in. Uh, love hearing that. Yeah, that's exactly what uh, collecting cards is about. 2020 Panini Phoenix, Fireburst, Justin Herbert, Rookie, SGC, Mint 9. Uh, nice looking card. Very cool that it's part of your collection now. Next one is sent by Tony, and it's really not a regular rollers uh, item, but it's an interesting one. He wrote, I came across this listing for a 1955 Topps Jackie Robinson. I had no intention of bidding, but uh, it is graded by GAI, which, as you know, was a decent grading company 10 or more years ago. The thing about it, the card, is that it's a GAI 10. At first thought, I thought perhaps it was a reprint, but nowhere on the on the slab or, or on the card, from what I can see, does it suggest reprint. I'm not an expert on the 55 Jackie, but something seems off to me with this one. Just wanted to hear your thoughts. Yeah, this one's very interesting. GAI, like you said, was a legit grading company. Uh, they went out of business maybe 10 or so years ago, but you know, cards and GAI holders are generally considered to be legit. I'm, I'm looking this card over. This looks like a real 1955 Topps Jackie Robinson. I don't see anything suggesting that it isn't, and it looks to be ultra sharp. Now, it wouldn't grade a 10 today by one of the major grading companies. You can see it's a little off-centered left to right as you look at the card, but it looks to be extremely sharp, and uh, went for $2,700 in auction. That's about what a PSA 7 would go for, so I don't know the buyer's intention here, but if they were to cross it over to PSA, if it got a 7 or higher, they'd be doing very well. Uh, you know, From the pictures, it looks like it probably would, but the bigger risk is not so much that it's a fake uh, or a reprint. The bigger risk with a company like GAI, a high-end card in a GAI holder, is that the card is trimmed or altered somehow, as GAI, I think, would have been a lot less likely to catch that sort of thing back then than uh, say PSA would be today. So that's where the real the real gamble is. Next one sent by Paolo who wrote, after watching countless videos on YouTube on how to make money in sports cards, I, tried to, I figured I'd try to roll the dice. I'm certainly no stranger to the idea. However, I'm lacking experience in eBay sniping, taking advantage of buying in the off season and poor listings. I saw this Jerry Judy XR one of one new era patch that caught my eye with a poor listing. I sent the offer for $199 with shipping and fees. I was all in for under 250. My plan is to get the card graded by BGS or PSA and sell when Judy has a nice week or two during the season. I think there's room for some profit here, seeing that his optic-rated uh, rookie gold out of 10 sold for more than 
my one of one. My only fear with the card is that it's not in the best condition. Judy has a poor season or that XR one of ones aren't the most popular or coveted cards on the market. I feel that new, the new era tag and card will hold its value. RPA for under 250. Uh, never know. Judy could have a uh, Justin Jefferson like season and the card could explode. Would love to hear your thoughts about the card and purchase. So if you're buying this card strictly to resell during the season for a profit, you know, it's not, not a, the type of card I personally would target, uh, but that doesn't mean it's not a good idea. It's just not, not something that would be on my radar, but you know, you've done a good job sort of identifying some of the, the risks, you know, the card is you're buying it raw. So it could have corner dings and just not worth the grading uh, Two is that, yeah, Judy, he's not really an established, you know, superstar to the level where it's like guaranteed he's going to have a good season. He, he could have a total bust of a season. This card could really plummet. There's a lot of downside there. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, XR, I mean, that's not, not sort of a top brand. So that sort of limits the, the upside as well. But you've also done sort of a good job identifying the, the potential. You know, he, yeah, he has a breakout season. That, that's definitely in play. Or if he just has a couple really great games, you know, his cards could go way up during then. So that could be a potential thing. And, and the fact that it's a one of one and it has the nice tag there probably protects it, assuming he doesn't have like a terrible season. So there's just a lot of factors. And that's actually one of the reasons I would not target this card. There's just so many unknowns and so many factors that you can't really calculate what's going to happen based on his upcoming season. So I wouldn't say, you know, there's anything wrong with your purchase here, but uh, like I said, it's just not something I personally would, would target with that in mind. Next was sent in by Adam, who wrote, I've been on a bit of a regular rollers binge as of late as I was trying to fill out a 20-card PSA vintage order. To do that, I bought, the, uh, I bought three recent cards raw, one of which was from Greg Morris Cards. It's a 1971 Topps Thurman Munson. I have his 1970 rookie PSA graded already, but always thought the 1971 card was beautiful and one of the nicest cards in the set. Yeah, awesome card here. 1971, I mentioned last week, is the first year where Top started showing some in-action photos on their cards. Showed the Nolan Ryan last week. And the Thurman Munson here is one of the more famous in-action shots from uh, the set. Very, very cool image uh, of Munson there. Block in the plate. As Adam said, this card was sold by Greg Morris Cards, who, as I mentioned at the beginning, is sponsoring this episode. They're one of the premier sellers of sports cards on eBay, especially raw vintage, but... Uh, really everything modern and, and graded stuff as well. They've recently started a YouTube channel uh, talking about sort of the history of sports cards. A lot of interesting uh, content. A recent uh, video talks about the most beautifully designed baseball card sets of all time. I recommend you give them a try. I, I'm a customer there as both as a buyer and a seller. Check out their YouTube page and their uh, their store. I've included links to both in the description below. Next was sent by Jake, who wrote, I'd just like to shed some light on some of the shenanigans going on with the most recent Hall of Famer, Scott Rowland's 1995 Bowman Silver. This card raw was routinely selling for $20 to $27 in all of 2022, when it, uh, getting up over 30 leading into the Hall of Fame voting. However, thanks to Topps and several shady sellers, it has plummeted. Topps made at least two reprints of the card in 97 and 2002, and they look almost exactly like the original and even say 1995 on the back. You have to look on the fine print on the back to see reprint. Starting around the weekend after the Hall of Fame announcement, several sellers started selling these reprints as the original, some putting front and back pictures but not saying anything about reprint in the title, calling it a 1995, while others doing the same but only putting a picture of the front of the card so you can't even see the back. This one particular seller listed 14 auctions with no picture of the back of the card. I suspect most if not all of these were reprints and they sold around $20. So while knowledgeable sellers were not bidding on these reprints, what happened was so many reprints sold for lower and lower that, that it totally skewed the sold history of the real card, and this card was which was an original legit rookie sold for just $13 on February 13th. Since, the sold history has been all over the place and this card with some selling for 12 bucks, others going for 35 which is around where it should be. I guess Topps learned their lesson. I don't believe they make these exact replica reprints anymore. While I didn't buy any roll and reprints, I have gotten duped on an Evan Longoria auto reprint and an Eddie Murray rookie that both look just like the originals. Thanks, Topps, for making the hobby as confusing as you possibly could. This was in by Grant, who wrote, In 1999, Ron Dane won the Heisman Trophy and passed uh, Ricky Williams as the NCAA's all-time leading rusher. Dane's record stood until 2016 when Donnell uh, Pumphrey broke the record by eight yards. Pumphrey's stats include his bowl game stats, but Dane's stats do not include his bowl game stats, as the NCAA did not include bowl game stats when Dane played. Thus, Dane is unofficially the all-time leading rusher, but Pumphrey is the official all-time leading rusher. Dane was a 250-pound power running back. And I was nine years old when he won the Heisman. He went on to be the first round, uh, first round draft pick by the Giants, but did not have a successful NFL career as he was the backup to Tiki Barber. I recently stud stumbled on this uh, 2000 Upper Deck Pros and Prospects Signatures Peace card featuring a patch auto. The back of the card states the patch is game-worn jersey worn by Ron Dane in an official 
Wisconsin game. Uh, thus, the card likely has a patch of his game-worn material from his Heisman Trophy winning season, where he also set the all-time leading rushing title. This uh, $15 card had free shipping, but is still one of the most expensive Ron Dane cards that has been purchased, according to 130point.com. Dane is also a member of the College Football Hall of Fame. I will add that the top 30 NCAA all-time leading rushers, only Ladanian Tomlinson and Tony Dorsett, are in the NFL Hall of Fame. Hopefully this helps someone in trivia one day. Also have to laugh that in 2000, people were probably very excited to pull rookie Ron Dane cards and probably threw away a Michigan quarterback's cards in the dollar box. His name was Tom Brady. Next one sent up by Fred, who wrote, I uh, recently stumbled upon and won an auction that I would love to share. I've been in the market for a 73 Mike Schmidt rookie and was trying to find one for $115 or under when I found this lot. The Schmidt rookie is certainly not in perfect condition by any means, but with 50 cards in the lot, I thought I'd have a look. Most of their cards are all dollar or so cards of 70s and 80s Hall of Famers, but in the upper right-hand corner is a 1975 George Brett rookie. I saw I submitted a bid uh, for the lot and was able to win it for $113.25, about $130 all in with taxes and shipping. Curious as to what you think of this one, if you think uh, this was a bargain, because I do. Yeah, I think you got a really nice pickup here for the price. The, you know, the George Brett in the upper right really, like you said, should have been highlighted. It's, it's not as much as the Schmidt, but uh, a, a close second, we'll say. And there were up-close pictures of the Schmidt. The Schmidt looks, you know, fairly low-grade VG minus, we'll say. But the Schmidt and the Brett, I mean, those two cards alone, assuming they're sort of good to VG, basically should get you to more than your all-in cost already. And then, yeah, you got another close to 50 cards of mainly Hall of Famers. And there's not any other big money cards, but a lot of, yeah, like you said, dollar card, $2 cards in there. Uh, it'll add up nicely, maybe even up to $5. You get a 77 Rose, 77 Brett, and some other nice stuff. So, yeah, I think you did uh, very well here. Next was sent by Guy, who wrote, You always talk about star power on cards, and I don't think it gets much bigger than this. I'm a big Jay-Z collector. He'll never bust a hamstring or have a bad game, and everything he does from here on out just makes his name better. But to have the rest of the guys on the card, there's a lot of championships and a lot of really big names on this card, not to mention it's low serial numbered out of 193, weirdly, and I got it for about $70. Ah, very cool card. I didn't even know this card existed, but yeah, a lot of star power, like you say. Jay-Z, all-time great rapper, of course. Shaq, Shaq and Yao Ming are Hall of Famers. Ben Wallace was a solid player as well, just a cool quad relic card. And I like on the back how they sort of explained the relics back then. They did a lot more of that. The Jay-Z is a celebrity-worn jeans card of uh, Jay-Z. So there you go, some jeans worn by Jay-Z. I got 99 problems, but this card ain't one. And I'll finish on a vintage bargain. This was sent by Mark, who wrote, I'm a Dodger fan and card collector, and I just snagged this. To me, a pretty cool rare card on eBay. It's a Zach Wheat 1922 W573 strip card graded in SGCEX5. I like these rare oddball uh, old cards. For folks who don't know, Zach Wheat is an all-time Dodger great and a Hall of Famer. He still holds the team record in several categories, including hits, singles, doubles, triples, and total bases. Anyway, this card is quite rare. There are only eight graded copies on PSA, the highest being a four, and there's only eight graded copies in SGC, the highest being a 7.5, and the, the next two highest being fives. This is one of them. Looking at it today, I think it would probably get more like a four, but that doesn't really matter to me. It's a solid rare card and a pretty nice grade. It's over 100 years old of a Dodger all-time great Hall of Famer, and pretty cool to have one of the best copies available. I paid about $300 for it all in. All things considered, this seemed like a great price for a rare card of an all-time Dodger great in nice grade. Strip cards remain a great way to get old Hall of Famers, uh, old, old Hall of Fame cards at relatively low prices. But that's it for this week's regular rollers. Thank you everyone for watching and thank you everyone for all the great submissions, whether I ended up using your submission or not. I'm a little behind on my submissions at the moment, so if you send something in, I may not get to it for a few weeks, but uh, please keep them coming as uh, I really appreciate it. But until next time, have a great day and see you all again real soon. Thanks everyone.